I would like to welcome everyone to the Santa Clara Valley chapter of the Linda California Native Plant Society's annual show. This is the first time that I've presented, and I would like to thank them for inviting me. Uh, my name is Kate Hutnick. I'm a volunteer uh, trail docent with both county parks and with open space. So I lead hikes and walks year round. And I do have an emphasis on wildflowers. Let's see, I do have some resources. And uh, as far as getting started with where to go, what to see, and how to find how to find your way around Santa Clara Valley, Mid Peninsula Open Space District. They do put out a quarterly newsletter and guide, which has all of their activities in it. This is valuable, and even though they do mostly in North County, I have gone to their events, and their hikes are very high quality. The people who lead the hikes are extremely knowledgeable and uh, you can pretty much pick your activity. This document is also electronic and online. You don't have to receive a hard copy. The other thing is County Parks has just published their Play Here brochure, and this has all of the free County Park activities between now and the end of August. So it's a very, very valuable document. It is free, it is over here. I'm gonna walk over here. I have some other things here that um, you're free to go ahead and uh, pick up. This is the Seasonal Symphony. This is uh, more about our uh, parks and the wildflowers. I'm going to be talking about Rancho Cañada de Oro Open Space Preserve. These photos were taken at Rancho, so there is a map to Rancho. The Open Space Authority, which I also volunteer with, they are having a 20th year anniversary in Coyote Valley. If you're interested in where some of our parks are in Santa Clara Valley, this document, please feel free. Now I want to say something about the healthy trails. This is a program that uh, really got me interested and got me out on the trails. And if you go ahead and you pull out the form and you send it in, They'll send you this free book. And what's neat about this book is that all the trails in it are color-coded. So easy, moderate, strenuous. And if you go to the page, they not only have a map, but they have trail highlights. So that is a way to find out, gee, I've only got so much time. Where can I go to see some wildflowers? This is a free book. Go ahead and pick up one of these if you're interested. And I will tell you something, because I am from Santa Barbara County. I didn't know anything about open space here. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so I started tagging along with Med Pen hikes and with County Parks hikes. And that's how. And then I joined the Healthy Trails program. All right, let's see. Let's get on. Some of the other resources I have is Chaparral Habitat which is really excellent. We have a lot of chaparral in California. Chaparral evolved to burn. So the next time that you hear, oh, Los Angeles is on, is on fire, San Bernardino County's on fire, San Diego County's on fire, that's chaparral. And it has evolved to burn. For butterflies, I use this resource. I encourage people if they want to get started birding or with uh, wildflowers, I mean with butterflies, all this is all you need. I recently started getting interested in lichen. I'm taking a lichen to lichen. And uh, this has just been published by the California Lichen Society. That's an excellent resource. But the best for me wildflower resource is this book from Henry Cope. And it is these are non-digital uh, images, but they're still clear enough that um, if you take, take a picture or you use your memory to remember what you saw on the trail, you can come back and you can find that, that wildflower in this book. This is my Bible. When you go to the page, you don't get just information on that particular wildflower. 
you get information and pictures on similar wildflowers. So even if I've made a mistake, um, there'll be other pictures and it'll widen my horizon. So this book can be obtained from the Henry Coe website. What people are doing generally is they're simply using their cell phone to take a picture of the resources. And then they can just, uh, later, they can just look up this stuff. Weeds of the West. This was given to me, and at first I thought, oh, wonderful. But now I use it a lot. And um, it's, it's got everything you could possibly imagine in it. So let's get started. What do I point it out? Uh, oh. Okay. In today's presentation, the things I'm going to cover are the unique aspects of our valley's geology, the best places or great places to see wildflowers, when does wildflower season start, how long does the wildflower season last, what part do various watersheds play? <coughs> watersheds are something that's just kind of back in the back of our mind. We really don't give them much thought because our water is all taken care of for us. I want to kind of, kind of uh, give you a little education on that. The other thing is, of course, our valley's a visual symphony. And our wildflower display every year is like a visual sympathy with every single little flower playing its part. And then we're going to look at some resources to enjoy wildflowers. How many know what our state rock is? You're familiar with uh, California serpentine? If it's slippery and it's green, it's California serpentine. <laughs> and this particular rock in the state of California, it is the most precious. It's the the tiniest amount of the types of habitat. It's endangered because, as you can see, in the areas where it grows or where it has developed, it's either really, really remote and there might be mining, or in our case, aren't we lucky, in Santa Clara County, not only do we have an awful lot of serpentine, we also have it in areas that are accessible. Now, this is both a boon and a curse because the boon side of it is yes, uh, we can get out there and study the plants, and we can study the geology, we can uh, really get down and, and do our little plots. But on the other hand, um, the serpentine habitat is constantly being threatened by development. Serpentine soil is very thin, and if you cut off the top part or you slice down through, California serpentine uh, landscape habitat, you would see that it's all rock. And the soil itself is very thin. And what's good about that is that's where our native plants are going to thrive. They have evolved best suited to that environment over millions of years. European plants don't really have that ability because they weren't developed or they didn't evolve here. They're not good with using water the way our native plants are. But this is what happens on serpentine soil. In the spring, we have wildflowers. This site was right next to 101, right down there next to the waste management plant. How many of you have ever hiked up to Coyote Ridge to see the wildflowers? Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to. People if, they're people, if you're interested, I'm going to take you on a little visual trip from Kirby Canyon all the way up uh, to the ridge top. And, uh, but I did see this when I was going through and gathering photos. I realized we haven't had a good wildflower year since 2010. And so that's not good, but, but our climate is cyclical. California is basically a desert. It's dry here. And I have faith that we'll get some rain at some point. Okay, where is the serpentine? All right, well, how many of you have heard of Jasper Ridge Biological Preserve? How many of you have been up there and taken the walks? Excellent, excellent. I did for the first time this year, and uh, I was amazed. I want to see it in all of its, all of its uh, moods and seasons. Edgewood, 
County Park and, and Nature Preserve in the south, Almaden Quicksilver, Santa Teresa, Calero, Rancho San Vicente, Rancho Canano de Oro, County Ridge, County Springs, Harvey Bear, Mount Madonna. And a lot of these uh, preserves and parks are contiguous. And there's a reason for that. They want to preserve county parks, open space, wants to preserve as much serpentine habitat as they can. Okay, Jasper Ridge Biological Preserve. When I visited Jasper Ridge, I went with a volunteer, and uh, she just kind of whisked me from the, the park and ride to the preserve. I did try to find an address. I don't know if it's really published. I didn't find it on their website. Uh, it is a fairly large preserve. It's very old. It's got uh, Ohlone uh, Native American sites, uh, kitchen rocks, um, some old bowls on the property. The tours, the actual wildflower tours, are ending this, at the end of this week, basically. Mm -hmm. However, they do have tours uh, of the property through until October, I think, from October 1st oh, to, to May 31st. So if you want to see the property, if you go on, very nice trails. It's a beautiful preserve. You're going to go through uh, some uh, mixed oak woodlands, some blue oaks. You're going to go through uh, chaparral, which is always interesting. Uh, you will get up there. Let's take a look at that. The day that we visited, it was overcast. This was at the end of March. And she told me later that they didn't really have that good of a wildflower season. But it is a high, uh, shallow meadow. In this one section, there's an asphalt road that runs along it. And then you go back into the forest. And I have been getting into lichen, so my focus was on this beautiful, beautiful lichen rock. But you can see the display. And there are several different ty types of wildflowers. I'm seeing um, owl's clover, goldfields, tidy tips. Edgewood County Park. This is another park that is relatively close to Jasper Ridge. And this one is open to the public. And it does have a team of dedicated volunteers who would be more than happy to lead you on a walk. Their wildflower walks will go through uh, June 9th. So there's plenty of time to see uh, that piece of property. It is sandwiched between uh, Highway 280 and uh, some housing tracks, but it is still very beautiful and it does have slopes with the wildflowers, slopes of the serpentine. Uh, it's about three miles. This is the kind of wildflowers that you have on the, on the slopes out there. Uh, these are gold fields and those are um, Blue eye, pardon me? The, uh, the bird's eye gilead yeah, or tri bird's eye gilead. gilead tricolor. Yeah. Okay. Polgus Ridge Open Space Preserve. How many have been to Polgus Ridge? What an interesting place. I had never been there. I went on a mid pen hike. I live in, way down in the south, 80, uh, Highway 87, 85. So for me to drive north has to be a special occasion. I was enthralled with Polgus Ridge. Trails in the shade, some trails in the sun. But what was the most amazing is that they had this fetid adder's tongue wildflower. And I'm walking along and their group is going, oh boy, oh boy, we're going to see the fetid adder's tongue. Mm -hmm. And I had never ever seen anything like that. We have two wildflowers that I know of in the environment that are green and brown, and they have both of them virtually in the same spot on this trail. And let's see. They had the usual spring wildflowers. This was, I believe, also in March. So we saw the Indian warriors, we saw the hound's tongue, we saw um, the milkmaids, and uh, some of the, the real common, the gold um, California. Go, uh, I can't think of it right now. Buttercup. 
So there were a lot of those, but there were also this incredible fet fetid adder's tongue. I took this picture, I didn't stick my nose down next to it, but I have a feeling that the fetid part has to do with its scent. And they were all over, you could touch that, and it was pretty substantial, it wasn't, wasn't uh, like a, a, a light pedal that would break apart in your hand. And they were all over the place. You can, it was target rich for photography. Sierra Azul Open Space Preserve. This is another big sprawling property that goes all the way. One of the entrances is over by Lexington. The entrance that I'm familiar with is on Hicks Road, the top of Hicks Road because it's right adjacent to a county park that I uh, visit a lot. If you start out on Sierra Zulwood Road Trail, you're going to be passing through about three miles of chaparral on the one side. Let me get a picture of it. And also, you're going to have the fog. So during the summer and during the hot months, it is going to be cool. And you've got about three miles of fairly level. Chaparral on both sides in some areas, so you're going to get the chaparral uh, wildflowers and butterflies. A lot of wildlife, it's not unusual to see California whiptail lizard, which is an uncommon lizard. Some of the more common uh, snakes and the ordinary lizards, the, uh, the fence lizard and the um, the alligator lizard, but most of the snakes would be like the ring neck snake and the, um, the garter snake, gopher snake maybe. Okay, Arroyo de los Mariposa. This is a secret site. This is no more than simply a pullout along Hicks Road. It's been long known to California Native Plant Society members because it has the blazing stars. Blazing stars like steep, rocky slopes. And these flowers, the, the size of the blossom can be three inches across. And they bloom for all of April. I was told by somebody who drove from here to Patterson over Mount Madonna, no, over Mount um, Hamilton, that they were lining the roads in places. Lining, but who wants to drive? all the way over um, uh, Mount Hamilton when they're right on Hicks Road. And what's been happening over the years, because I have been monitoring this site for about three years, and um, the seeds are going down along the road. So you don't have to climb up uh, into some, uh, some rough uh, country like I did to take pictures. There's actually, <coughs> this flower is blooming right along the road, and I want to talk a little bit more about this. It widens at the mouth of the arroyo to accommodate parking, three or four. Let's see, there's blazing stars, there's a handful of other wildflowers. It is a haven for butterflies. I have no idea why, but it is just a haven for butterflies throughout the season. And hummingbirds, for the first time last year, I saw a hummingbird nectar sipping from a Canyon Dudleya, which is the red and the orangey one that's very pretty, and that was that was totally amazing. So it's a, it's a good good little nature fix, and um, I consider it a, a safe place to go because there's a lot of traffic up and down the road, and I pull over there and take pictures um, quite often during the year. Okay, blazing star. Almaty Quicksilver County Park. Okay. Every April, the Friends of Almaty and Quicksilver have a wildflower scavenger hunt. And they do the cutest job you could imagine. They have this little booklet that has all these little poems. Flower number five, Clue. At the movies, you will see Snacks that look a lot like me. So what's the common name? Oh. <laughs> Popcorn. Popcorn flower. So, ho, 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 ho. so you can work your way through this, but they don't just stop there. 
they hand out a high quality uh, double sided flyer that has the names and the pictures of the wildflowers that you're likely to see. So that's, that's really, really clever. It's great for kids. It's great for uh, adults. And they have the little walk, the walk. You don't have to even have to walk that far. And uh, they, over 100 people, uh, the last time that they did it this year, over 100 people came along and, uh, and did the little, the little uh, wildflower scavenger hunt. The other thing that the Friends of Omni and Quicksilver do is they publish this little guide. And the little guide is also color-coded. It's the flowers of almond and quicksilver. But this will fit in your pocket, whereas this wouldn't. And so uh, this, this is very handy to have. High quality digital images. And they have done the best they can uh, identifying the flowers correctly. There, there are some errors. They are working on it now. What else can I tell you about that? Best trails for wildflower, the Senator, Guadalupe, Mine Hill, Wood Road Trail, and Castellero Trail route, route Loop on Hicks Road. And for myself, and we're going to get to this, but during the summer when it's hot, where do you go? So I was told by an old timer, um, hike Deep Gulch, Deep Gulch Trail. So I'll talk about that later. Okay. This is a uh, oh picture that was taken a few years ago, but that smear right there is rose clover. Rose clover, and Hicks Road comes out, it drops down across this broad, broad meadow, and then you can <coughs> continue on up to where those high power lines are, and uh, that is where you get to English Town, English Camp. But there are wildflowers, there's wildlife all along this route. And it's not that steep. And Castellero is up here. So if you decided you were going to do the Castellero Loop, it's, uh, it's right there. Santa Teresa County Park. We got a main entrance, $6. However, if you come around to the Fortini entrance, which is really on San Vicente, near the junction of San Vicente and Fortini, you can park for free. Uh, Santa Teresa has significant serpentine. Uh, a lot of weathered red serpentine rocks that are really covered with lichen. It's a beautiful park in the spring. The best trails are Stowell Ranch, Mine Hill, Fortini, the Loop. So let's see if we can take a picture here. This is about the best that I could do uh, with the wildflowers. Um, of the collection of photos that I had. Now Ron has several web pages. Every single trail in the park, Ron has uh, documented at the different times of years uh, of the year, and so he has uh, a lot of really great wildflower pictures. But this is a good this is a good park, especially if you're anywhere near Almaden Valley. You can just scoot over to um, Fortini Road and and hike it. Rancho San Vicente is not yet open to the public. Rancho San Vicente is the old Berryessa Rancho. The Berryessa Rancho at one time went all the way up and included parts of Almaden and Quicksilver. Uh, the mine was part of the Berryessa Rancho. Rancho San Vicente is, I would say, half of that property is, uh, is rough serpentine. And I have been leading hikes there for the last three years. And I'm looking, always looking for volunteers to help me because some of, some of the groups of hikers are 20 people. And for one person to, yeah, get on down the trail. <laughs> <laughs> one person makes it a little tough. It does have spectacular spring wildflower displays. Uh, county parks, the rangers sometimes lead hikes. But um, for photographers and for uh, people who just like to get out and look at wildflowers, um, <clears throat> you can go along with me. It's contiguous with Calero and Rancho Pañada de Oro Open Space Preserve. And this is a photo from last year taken up uh, at Rancho San Vicente. You can see that uh, 
a lot of that old serpentine. Okay, Calero County Park is right next door. And let's see, but the best trail for wildflowers in Calero County Park is going to be the Serpentine Trail Loop. <clears throat> the Havelina is good, but you have to hike quite a ways to get to it because it is serpentine. Uh, Calero County Park is rich in wildlife and sweeping scenic views. But this is the Serpentine Trail here at the bottom, and then it goes on up the hill. This is all serpentine, and so you have a lot of the, um, what's the lavender, lenanthus? The real common lenanthus. Maybe it is, maybe it is uh, <laughs> common lenanthus, but it just covers, covers this hill. And this is the serpentine trail. And you can get to it on Casaloma Road. Rancho Cañada de Oro Open Space Preserve, and I have, I do have the maps here. The photos over there, the little photo collages that show the early spring wildflowers through, I think, to July, all of those photos were taken at, um, along the Mayfair Ranch Trail at uh, Rancho Cañada de Oro. What I like about the Mayfair is about half of the, of the trail is going to be in shade, so it's a nice summer hike. It's a safe place so you don't have to worry about uh, going by yourself. Wind poppies. This is a little section of uh, the Mayfair Ranch Trail. And uh, some years we have spectacular displays of uh, the wind poppies. And we recently, about a week ago, we saw some at Rancho San Vicente for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if that plant, uh, that flower has been reported at Rancho San Vicente. It was the first time that I had seen it, and we saw it quite a bit. Okay. Cowdy Ridge and Cowdy Springs. So some of you have hiked up to Cowdy Ridge, and you have seen that fantastic display that we have every year. In my opinion, Cowdy Ridge and the hillsides from approximately Cowdy, Howdy Creek Golf Course over to Cochrane. That is a fantastic area for wildflowers. It's a preserve. The Thule elk are out there. Badgers, which are getting, well now they are considered uh, rare and endangered. And the San Joaquin Kit Fox. In the time that I have been volunteering and leading hikes, I have actually seen the San Joaquin uh, Kit Fox twice. And it was running fast both times. <laughs> People go there for the Bay Area checks. Yes, yes. I, I like butterflies, and we see them at uh, Rancho San Vicente. This year was very good for the Bay Checker spot at Rancho San Vicente. It was so good that I had to quit taking pictures of them, or I was never going to get the hike done. Mm -hmm. And I understand the docents up at Edgewood, they told me that um, the number of bay checker spots is uh, stable there and that they were seeing quite a few this year too. Cowdy Ridge, they were telling me that they had to watch where they put their feet so that they would not, and we'll see a picture of, of one of the bay checker spots. It, the wings of the bay checker spot butterfly is like a stained glass window. Let's see. Okay. This is what the hillsides, the hillsides, not even the ridge, the hillsides at um, what they call it Coyote Springs, because there's so many little springs draining down here. It is just a riot of color and a riot of wildflowers, serpentine wildflowers, especially that little one right there, that, that <coughs> Lamanthus. And um, the thing that's good about the Coyote Springs and the Coyote Hills is they let you wander among the wildflowers. You don't have to stay right on the road and, and not, work, not watch where you put your feet. You can go off, you can, you can call around, you can get close up, good pictures. It's just a wonderful place. But it is closed right now. Howdy okay. Lake, this is another good place for wildflowers. And primarily, 
and I haven't hiked it, but Ron here can back me up. He says that the Cowdy Ridge Trail, and they say there was a riot of color on the Cowdy Ridge Trail, 10 miles of it, and Mummy Mountain Trail, and the reason that they call that trail Mummy Mountain, does anybody know, has anybody seen why they call it Mummy, Mummy Mountain? I'm from the Santa Barbara County, so I thought it was a really strange name uh, to name a mountain and to name a trail. But then someone said, look, we were on an overpass, and there's the perfect outline of a, of a mummy in repose. So you can see where the arms are, you can see where the head is, you can see. It's amazing. And, and who, who would have noticed unless it was, it was pointed out? So that's why they call it Mummy Mountain. And the best wildflowers are on the mummy's head. <laughs> yeah, that, that's probably, I, I had seen that, that area, because I've hiked, I've hiked the, the Mendoza Ranch Trail. And so that would be a uh, serpentine, that would be a uh, pretty, pretty rough area. But they do lead wildflower hikes. Ron is scheduled to, uh, to do one of his photographer classes there. When is that coming up? Next Saturday. Next, Next Saturday. And what they do uh, at, at Mendoza is you're going to be inside at the, um, at the park? No, it's outdoors. I okay. started at the Mendoza Ranch okay. Staging Center, and I show a yes. powerless PowerPoint show. OK, good. Pictures. Excellent. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, and then you head out onto the trail. The Root Pond is a nice little oasis. It's a cool spot uh, for, for hot weather, and um, dragonflies just love it. This is a photograph of uh, one of the trails in spring down there by the dam. And they have a new, they have a new trail spur out there called Ed Wilson. And the Ed Wilson Trail must must be just kind of kind of on the side of that. It's a beautiful park. It's an old park, all ranch land. Nobody has disturbed it. Okay, Mount Madonna. Now you might think that Mount Madonna would be a strange place for wildflowers because we associate Mount Madonna with the redwoods. We associate Mount Madonna with uh, cattle baron Henry Miller and the Miller Ruins and the Miller Nature Trail. However, there's another entrance, the Sprig Recreation Area entrance on Hecker Pass, and um, it's a trailhead. You've got a couple of different trails that you can go. I hike it every year to see the butterflies, masses of buckwheat, and if you have never gotten to know the lonely buckwheat plant, I encourage you to do so because it is going to feed the butterflies and feed the insects through until um, October. And the thing about nectar sources for insects is that they really drive the engine of spring. They drive the engine of the year because the lizards are going to eat those bugs and those insects, the birds, the baby birds that are hatching out. It, um, whenever you, and the butterflies have to eat something, and so do the insects. So I always do that hike every year so that I can enjoy the, uh, the butterflies. It's also, you're going to pick up a lot of uh, fog, so it's going to be a cool place to go uh, during the heat. You're going to be able to, you go up Ridge Trail, across Thai Camp, down through some uh, serpentine, down the repairing corridor. It's just a lovely trail. And I'm not a strong hiker. If anybody has ever hiked with me, they can tell you that I'm not a strong hiker. So I try to pick trails that are comfortable and that have nice things to see. Okay, the start of the wildflower season. Anyone who spends time in open space, anyone who knows about our wildflowers will tell you, start looking for wildflowers in mid-March. Sometimes it's early, sometimes we'll see a lot of milkmaids, we'll see a lot of um, buttercups, we'll see some shooting stars, We'll start to see our hound's tongue, but usually it's about the middle of March. And it will run until you've got, the peak is April, and it depends on the year. Sometimes they've had to shut the hikes down, the wildflower hikes down. They've had to shut them down the second weekend in April, instead of running it all the way through. Sometimes it'll go all the way through to the first week in June. So let's see. However, there are wildflowers out there year-round. 
they're just not as much. We can take a look at some of the different uh, wildflowers that do start to bloom in summer and late into fall. You can think of the California fuchsia. The California fuchsia is a beautiful flower and it's going to be around. And the aster, you have a beautiful California aster and it's going to color our trails. The way I like to think about it is as far as when the season ends, the amount of daylight and soil moisture because the California uh, flowers, the California native plants have evolved to be very, very good uh, water users and when the, the uh, remaining moisture has gone from the soil, then you're, gonna, you're not going to see any more wildflowers. But some areas through October also, they seem to die away at about the time we start to see fall color, but also about the time that we start to see the mushrooms and the fungus and the slime molds, which are really interesting in their own right. And I do hikes just to appreciate um, the, the fungus. Okay, let's talk about our valley's watershed and what part does our valley's watershed play? We think of ourselves as being in the Mount Hamilton drainage. This is all part of the Mount Hamilton watershed. However, in the valley here, we have three or four different watersheds. And this is from the, um, the Water District's website. You've got the Coyote watershed, Guadalupe, uh, West Valley, uh, Ubis, and Yagas. And if you look at those little bits of water there, the longest one by Morgan Hill, that's Anderson Reservoir. It is the biggest reservoir in our valley. And they're going to be scooping it out so that they can make it even bigger. Then you have uh, Calero. You have, what else is there? Uh, Chesbro and Uvis. And down there you have um, Coyote. So there's our watershed. Let's look at what else is going on here. Okay, watershed is like a natural funnel. And that's what it does. It drains from the highest point in the landscape down to sea level. This is a picture taken from the Ball Peaks Trail. Looking down over Calero, that trail there is probably the Chesuntuck. Chesuntuck. The next mountain there, the mid-mountain, that's part of Rancho San Vicente. That's the backcountry. I am leading hikes, a loop hike to actually see more of the backcountry because most of us are staying out on that serpentine. The serpentine is already turning brown. That's the trail that the wildflower walks take as they go across. This is not really very clear, but we have an old stone wall out there. This is an old stone wall. And it's quite amazing, quite artistically put together. It comes up out of the top of that hill, it disappears into Hoyata Canyon. We don't know the reason for it. It's not, not tall enough to keep, keep stock out. So this is how the watershed will be draining and serpentine soil drains the fastest. You can look at our valley's foothills from Highway 101 early April, mid-April and you're going to start to see these huge sections of brown and that's the serpentine and the water is draining out of it. The good part is it may be draining off the surface but serpentine soil retains 70 to 80 percent of the rainwater that falls on it. It percolates slowly down through, this is a picture of Rancho San Vicente, that's Calero Reservoir there, this is a big old chunk of serpentine, serpentine all down this ridge here, but before we let that water go to Calero to store for our use, we're going to let it do some other things. Out at Rancho San Vicente, there are several examples of how our watersheds work. And one of them is this natural seep pond. It's going to have water in it all year. No matter how hot and dry it gets, baby frogs, baby toads are going to be able to um, be born, develop, 
and hatch here. And it's just a, a wonderful little, little spot. We walk right past that. Also, there's various stock ponds on the property, some small, some large, and they're also going to be catching the water. You can't see it that clearly, but the um, water district has a cement um, channel that goes all the way up to Almond Inn Reservoir, comes down the canyon there behind uh, New Almond Inn, comes through Rancho San Vicente, and then goes over to Calero. Then it manages to go over to San Luis Reservoir. San Luis Reservoir trade water with us, and we trade water with them. So that's another example. And finally, when it gets down to the floor of Amadin Valley, you can see that here's another stock pond. Here's a beautiful elderberry in bloom. Rancho San Vicente is just a beautiful, wonderful property. Peninsula Open Space Trust purchased it for us, we the people, and turned it over to County Parks. And so County Parks is uh, going to be developing it and opening it. But until it is open, uh, consult the play here for when the hikes are going to take place. Okay. I just yes. want to point out that's the style ranch trail on the other side. Yes. That's kind of through the park. Yes. That's and the, you can one of the best wildflowers. Yeah. That's, uh, that's brown too. So that's all serpentine. Okay. Well, where do we go when it gets too hot? This picture was taken in May. Early May, and this is uh, Calero Reservoir, and you can see the non-native grasses are high. They choked out all the life for the native species. We're not seeing any wildflowers. It's a really snaky habitat now, so we've got to stay on the middle of the trail. So where are we going to go when it gets too hot? Well, the places that I go, and it depends on how far I want to drive, how much gas I want to spend, I'm not keen on, on taking an hour and a half to reach some place to relax. This is why I spend most of my time <clears throat> in county parks near where I live. So Horseshoe Lake is always going to be wonderful. It's going to be cool, lots of wildlife, and lots of wildflowers, and a nice variety of wildflowers. <coughs> deep Gulch, there's that old Deep Gulch again, and Deep Gulch is about a mile uphill. But it's in shade, and it has a surprising number of spring wildflowers. And um, it's what I hike during the hottest time of the year. Because what's neat about it is that you get up, you labor yourself up through that shade for about a mile, and then you make your way uh, four tenths of a mile, I have it count, four tenths of a mile to English town, English camp. But then you just go over the top, stay on the trail, go over the top, and the rest of it's downhill all the way. And most of that's in shade. So I enjoy hiking uh, Deep Gulch in summer. Mayfair Ranch Trail at um, Rancho Cañada de Oro, that is about half in shade. You've got riparian corridors, you've got shaded oak um, and hardwood forest areas. Mm -hmm. Eulistac Natural Area. How many have visited Eulistac? It's out there on um, Lick Mill. Is it Lick? Yeah, Lick Mill. And there's not really any designated place to park. You just kind of got to keep your eyes open, and when you see the sign, just kind of pull over. But that is a piece of property that has been um, renaturalized. They've taken out as many of the non-natives as they can. They've restored it. And you're going to be able to see our wild cherry. We have two types of wild cherry. One of them is the um, holly-leafed cherry. And we see the tree. We see the leaves. But we never see the cherries. But if you go to Eulis Tack, you'll be able to see those. They also have a cherry tree, um, the name of it is the, um, um, it's an island, it's an island down in, Catalina. pardon me, Ca Catalina. yes, Catalina, yeah. and um, that's, they believe that the native people traded to get their hands on the Catalina cherry because it was sweeter. 
And so they have examples of that. And they also have examples of some, some of the other, like our, our native um, grape. Who would have thought we had a native grape unless you had read the old accounts? And so they have that there. It's a great oasis. They're actually going to be doing a study. Um, looking at my time. They're actually going to be doing a study on the foxes that live in the little park, which is the gray foxes, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Redwood Forest Trails in Mount Madonna, there's a lot of them. If you want to drive all the way down there, you will be able to take advantage of the fog that comes rolling over the hill. In fact, I learned uh, from a, uh, an old timer that that, frog, that fog rolling up from the ocean hanging around uh, the Miller Ruins area, they actually harness that to keep the water cold and that to keep their refrigeration just from the fog. And the Elkhorn Slough, how many of you have been to the Elkhorn Slough? That's a nice place. It's a bit of a drive. They have a lovely visitor center. Point Lobos State Park in Carmel, if you want to drive, um, the hour and a half. Spend ten dollars to visit the park, but it is a national treasure in my opinion. It's the, what they say the, the greatest meeting of land and sea on the planet, and there are a lot of different trails. And then Julia Piper Burns, Big Sur, where the uh, waterfall falls into the ocean. They're going to have wildflowers on that trail into October, and butterflies. So it is quite nice. Okay, so. That concludes where to go to see wildflowers. However, we have about 10 minutes. We can just go through this rather, rather quickly. The Kirby Canyon County Ridge area is rich in scenic wonder. And it's, uh, it's about 10 to 12. I'll go through these quickly. And they've all got captions. So we'll be able to see what we're looking at. And uh, these tours are free. These wildflowers and tours are free. What is significant about this picture is on the other side of that fence, that's where the cattle don't graze. So you can see all the non-native grasses have completely choked out the wildflowers. But where the cattle have grazed, you have an incredible display every spring. Masses and masses of wildflowers at the entrance to Kirby Canyon. And it's, it's rocky. Um, it's right by waste management. The sun reflects off the serpentine rocks. It's quite warm. You have these little topo climate areas. This particular wildflower, which I can't pronounce its name, and Tom Cochran says it doesn't have a, a common name. Oh, it does have a common name. Um, Mountain dandelion. The pincushion is a desert relic plant at one time. Three of the plants that you find in this canyon were down in the Mojave area and the San Andreas Fault moving up the coast uh, brought them here. So this is a desert relic plant. This is another one, the woolly desert dandelion. It's a late spring bloomer. I used to watch for it because it's so pretty, but sometimes the tours would be over before it would show up. Monolopia, which everyone gets excited about. This is a serpentine endemic. If you're looking at a monolopia, uh, you're in serpentine soil. It's one of my favorites, a member of the sunflower set family, as you can see. And these are scorpion weeds, poppies, and tiny cryptanthic popcorn flowers. The scorpion weed has a pretty flower. If you take your time and get close and be patient, you can photograph the flowers. Uh, they are quite exquisite on their own. The most beautiful jewel flower. I don't know why they call it the most beautiful, but it is the most beautiful jewel flower. That's its name. And here's a close-up <laughs> picture of it. And hummingbirds and insects actually can sip nectar from this plant. And the blue dick, California hyacinth, California hyacinth, or is it common hyacinth that we also call that? <coughs> the endangered Mount Hamilton thistle blooms only once during its life cycle. Its little head hangs down. Hummingbirds, butterflies, nectar sip from it. 
It likes to keep its feet wet. It's a serpentine endemic and it's a Mount Hamilton watershed endemic. Going on up Kirby Canyon here, look at that rough, rough serpentine. It is rough ground to walk on. But this is when you get up high in Kirby Canyon, then the view of the valley starts to stretch out. We call this Poppy Alley. And you get up even higher, you start to get into areas where there's big chunks of serpentine. And the view really gets to be uh, uh, special. This is the Red Endangered Santa Clara Valley Dud Layout. It's not going to bloom until May. Most of the time we don't see it bloom. It's not particularly, you know, its color is kind of a yellowy, orangey. It's not really, really pretty. You go up higher, see our watershed. Now what's interesting about this picture is you have the north facing slopes. It's our watershed working again. The north facing slopes are going to retain their water. They're going to be moist. They're going to stay green. That's where the wildflowers are going to be. The south facing slopes, they're going to be exposed to more sun longer. And so they dry out sooner. Getting up high, there's the fiddle, fiddle neck and the poppy and the cream cuffs and the coyotes and the deer in the canyon. The less people, the more wildlife. Look at the wildflowers at this deer's feet and in the background. <laughs> Higher still, and you have a tremendous um, outcross of, of cream cup and poppies. Then you get up to the ridge. And this is Coyote Ridge. This is what everybody hikes up to once a year or more if they can get on the tours. The tours last from mid-March to mid-April. Mid They're sponsored by the Open Space Authority of Santa Clara County. And the Committee for Green Foothills will go up there. California Native Plant Society will go up there. It's uh, quite a place. Some more, uh, some tidy tips and some lichen. A riot of color, a fine tangle. But it's also a butterfly refuge. So if you like butterflies, Kirby Canyon, it stays nice and warm, and there's lots of things for the butterflies to eat. This is a uh, calcidon checker spot. This is not the, the special one. This is the calcidon, very common. It'll hatch out about three weeks after the bay checker spot. So early in spring, you're going to start to see the checker spot butterfly. It's very likely that it's a bay checker spot because this one will, will hatch three weeks later. This is the pale swallowtail on coffee berry. If you have a trail where there is coffee berry, that's where to look for the butterflies and other insects. I don't know why, they just love that coffee berry. It's an anise swallowtail. Differences in the color of the wings and the shape of the wings. That's the bay checker spot. That's the federally protected, endangered bay checker spot. And sometimes it, its wings do look like a stained glass window. It's a little smaller than the Chalcedon checker spot. Okay. Uh, as many of you know, they have set aside for now the Coyote Valley specific plan. Uh, the work was started on this and you really have to hand it to the people who would go to a meeting every month, once a month in Morgan Hill for five years. And some of those people traveled as far away as Oakland on a weeknight to sit in on those meetings to make sure that the special interest groups didn't have their say and take over um, Coyote Valley and the foothills for building. No butterfly was harmed while these pictures were being taken. In fact, that's Stu Weiss's hand, Dr. Stu Weiss's hand. He's the uh, the foremost authority on the Bay Checker Spot and um, okay. And here's some of the Plantago, the primary host plant for the Bay Checker Spot's larva. This is the plant that has to grow if you're going to have this uh, this little butterfly, this Bay Checker Spot, and that's one of the uh, the larvae. 
And what they do is the bay checker spot will fall around on the ground and it'll lay its eggs right at the base of one of those plantagos. And then, um, yum, 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 it'll climb up and it'll, it'll uh, start to, uh, to eat. So here's another picture on a wild onion. Bay checker spot. Now this is a chalcedon checker spot. You can see the difference between these two. And then this uh, orange sulfur. I like butterflies. And the West Coast lady. On oh, looks like on pincushion flower. And then the uh, painted lady. You can see the difference between these two. And then the smaller and the flyy, the Miletta Crescent, which are still flying. And the smallest of all is the Aquan Blue. We do have a lot of blues. Uh, we have the Mission Blue. We have the Silvery Blue. We have the Aquan Blue. We have the, the um, Spring Azure. We have a lot of different tiny blue butterflies. And we have the Pygmy Blue. Okay, Colin Buckeye. This was a um, very interesting picture. I set up this picture and I was photographing that butterfly and all of a sudden it took off. <laughs> and look at his little feet. He just kind of, and I photographed other ones and they're all just kind of dragging their legs when they first take off. It's really something. Um, in open grassland, birds like the meadowlark, like the lark sparrow, they have no place, they have no trees. So they can't build their nests in trees. So when the, the docents are out there, when the, uh, the wildflower hikes are out there, it's not uncommon to come across one of their nests. If you're walking through grassland or walking along a trail through grassland in spring, and all of a sudden a bird flies up uh, a short distance from you, stop and carefully check to see if there's a nest because we have found that in uh, more than one occasion. This clutch of eggs was actually under the edge of a rock that was almost at ground level. And uh, I had to put my nose to the ground to get that picture. This is a hillside out there with wildflowers. Um, we can see the Inland Valley here. The Packard family in the 70s bought Rancho San Felipe, which is an old uh, Spanish land grant, back in there. And that was their summer retreat, the Packard family. And since that time, they have an agreement with the Nature Conservancy that the ranch will stay with the Packards, but the surrounding rancho, which goes all the way to uh, Grant Ranch, and all the way down to Anderson Reservoir is, is now a preserve. And that, that will be for, um, for the people. So it was, it was quite a generous thing for the Packard family to do. There's remote areas on Coyote Ridge that are not on the official tour. And um, they're wetter. They're more serpentine. And you see some pretty, uh, pretty amazing wildflowers out there. Uh, we have the common, the ordinary Indian paintbrush, but we also have the Tiburon Indian paintbrush, which is rare and endangered. And uh, it grows on Coyote Ridge down towards Anderson Reservoir. Anderson's in the background there. There's another uh, picture of some. And uh, this little flower, the little hedge nettle, it's quite a pretty little flower. And it's very common. And once you know to look for it, you'd be surprised how, how it is everywhere in the spring. And it's, it's quite a challenge to photograph, but it's still a lot of fun. And of course, our uh, sticky monkey flower. The sticky monkey flower's leaves were used by the native people in the valley as a bandage. Now, at the time, those must have been pretty big-leaved sticky monkey flowers because uh, the leaves now are, are quite thin. But they would overlap the leaves to put them over a poultice on a wound. And who knew? <clears throat> this is a uh, uh -oh. company. 
I was out there, all I had was my 55 lens, I didn't have my telephoto with me, and I, this little bobcat, he was just on his morning round, and all of a sudden there I was. I was in his space, but look at that beautiful, beautiful mountain. And he wasn't keen. He wasn't keen that I was there, and I did the best I could taking pictures of him. And then um, he um, he backed off and went away. I hope that he spent the rest of his life there. So this is one of my favorite poems, especially in spring, especially for serpentine because it's mostly grasses. I have need of the sky. I have business with the grasses. I will up and away break of day to where the hawk is wheeling, lone and high, and where slow clouds drift by. And that is definitely serpentine grassland. And that's it. I thank you.